Meredith and I, we keep an eye on the internets, and we look for people who post receipts with weird stuff in them, and uh, then I make them. And that's what the customer's always wrong is all about, on how to drink. Ah, well, I'm just gonna try to figure out which one am I doing. I'm gonna do, what is, what is, what is that? That's the one I'm gonna do first. This is a margarita made with Casamigo Silver decaf. We're gonna need an ounce of lime juice. All right, there we go. An equal measure of Cointreau. All right, and two ounces of Casamigos. We got our lime, we got our tequila, we've got our Cointreau. We need our decaffeinated coffee, Folgers. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. How much decaffeinated coffee is appropriate in a margarita? I don't know, two bar spoons? Look at those Folgers crystals. Oh, beautiful. It smells like coffee, it smells good, honestly. I think when you use instant coffee in a cocktail, you should dry shake first. I mean, I'm basing it off of the idea that like, you wanna give that coffee a little extra time to dissolve. Okay. Hey, that worked pretty good. It smells nice. The orange and the coffee are, they smell nice. It's a, kind of a nice smell. A little bit worried this might actually be an okay drink. I don't know. Put that guy on the rim of the glass. There you go. Strain our decaffeinated margarita right in there. I'm gonna make a bet that this isn't so bad. Let's see. Ah, I was wrong. It's a lot worse than I was prepared for. It truly tastes like puking in your mouth. It's so bitterly acidic at its finish. It is bad. Uh, I have a job to do. It starts out orange, bitter, tart, and then that passes <laughs> straight through anything that was pleasant. Really briefly, right here, there's like a little bit of a moment where it comes up for air. It never really tastes like coffee. It kind of smells like coffee. And then it goes down into Bile Town. It is, that is bad. This customer was wrong. The only possible thought that I have is what if I added sugar to it? Like if I sweetened it up? Because one, Cointreau is really dry in terms of the triple sec. Um, like a dry Curacao or a Grand Marnier would be a lot sweeter. Two, a lot of people do add some simple to their margaritas. Like that's not an uncommon thing. So maybe this was ordered with the assumption that there'd be like a half an ounce of simple syrup in there. Stir it all up. And here we go with our decaffeinated margarita. The simple helps it a lot. It still never really tastes like coffee. Oh God, no. It still falls. <sighs> Fleming up, man. My mouth is like responding to it in a very unhappy way. There's a special place in hell for whoever invented this one. Well, Back to the skull. Let's pull another one of these fucking things. Oh, cool. An espresso martini with bay leaves. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they meant Baileys. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it both ways. Oh, God. Both of them get two ounces of vodka. There you go. Half an ounce or so of Kahlua. Well, maybe three quarters of an ounce. Okay, we need one ounce of cold brew concentrate for both of these. Quarter ounce of simple syrup, just a scotch. And you'd think that would be enough, but wait, there's more. Into this guy over here, I'm gonna add some bay leaves. I just, I'm just gonna crumble them up and put them in there. And hopefully like the shaking will do something and then we'll do a fine strain on, on the out of that. And then over here, uh, I'm just gonna do like a half an ounce of bay leaves on uh, the other guy, which I think is gonna kind of turn this into a mudslide really. So that'll be nice. And it's time to shake. Boom. Boom. Two drinks! Strain our bay leaves. Boom. And this is our bay leaves version. Probably should have double strained that. There's a few bay leaves in there. That's all right. Well, which one do you think is gonna be better? I know my money's on the bay leaves. 
As tradition holds, I should garnish this with some coffee beans. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And over here on the rotating gyre, that is this guy, badoop, badoop. That really completes it. Okay, here we go. Add bay leaves. I don't know if they're making much of a difference because this is just kind of nice. It just tastes like a pretty good espresso martini, actually. Uh, I, I can't complain about that. Maybe there's a slightly herbal component to it, but yeah, it's fine. I think you would have to do an extraction, which no bartender is gonna do in the five minutes that you give them. Yeah, I mean, the customer's weird, but like, how wrong are they? I don't know. This is the Bay Lees. I think this is what they were actually going for. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I prefer the Bay Lees. <laughs> Nothing could have prepared me for this result. <laughs> What is that taste? I don't know. I don't like saying things taste like chemicals because everything tastes like chemicals. Everything in your world is made of chemicals. But it tastes weirdly fake or something. I don't even know. What is Bailey's supposed to taste like? I don't know. I mean, it's kind of got a chocolate component in there, but like, I'm not gonna lie. Compared to the clean bay leaves, uh, <laughs> espresso martini. It just has a much cleaner coffee flavor, much brighter, much better balanced. I guess if life makes you choose between bay leaves and baileys, go with bay leaves. I, I don't know what else to say. It's not, people are gonna be like, oh Greg, you just don't like things that taste good. This not that this is sweeter, because this is a plenty sweet drink. They're both very sweet. It's that this has like a fake chocolate flavor jammed into it. Eh. I mean, it's kind of growing on me, but like that first sip comparing them, I was like, this is immediately an inferior drink. Yeah, and it actually has like a really unpleasant kind of like turn towards its end. It gets real uh, burny. It's a much smoother drink to borrow our common parlance. Yeah, I don't know. Surprises. The customer was right i guess but weird i love coffee it's an important part of my life and daily ritual and that's why i'm so happy that trade is the sponsor of this episode because trade is super cool they help me discover new coffees all the time because they've got over 55 awesome roasters making all kinds of coffee and they ship it straight to my front door roasted to order and as much as i love coffee i do find that picking new beans to try can be overwhelming there's so many species and places of origin and roasts and blends and farms and and all of that well Trade maps your specific preferences to hundreds of different flavor profiles and uses that to pair you with coffees that are perfect to your taste. It's part art, it's part science, I think there's a dash of machine learning and a lot of industry expertise, all tossed together so that I get all these fun little surprises in the mail and I find something enjoyable at every roast I get like this uh, Star Hill Stout Blend, created especially for Star Hill Brewery in Charlottesville, Virginia. Oh, oh that's very interesting, that's kind of smoky. I was not expecting that. That was the most pretentious coffee tasting you'll ever see. Maybe not ever, but that you'll ever see me do. Oh, <laughs> there's a Stephen Toast moment right there. So here's the thing. If you love coffee and want more of it, you should go to drinktrade.com slash how to drink or hit the link in the pinned comment or up here in the corner to sign up and get $15 off of select plans and get your first bag of coffee free. And now back to the show. Mmm, coffee, coffee, coffee. It tastes like, what is that, barbecue or something? That's wild. Yeah. It's uh, Pisco Sour. No, Pisco. It's what it says. It says Pisco Sour. No, Pisco. All right. So I'm going to start with an ounce of lemon juice. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that a Pisco Sour without Pisco, it's going to have a really hard time not being terrible. So we've got our sweet and our sour. I think we need some water. I'm going to shorten my pour. So normally I would do two ounces of alcohol. I'm going to do an ounce and a half of water just because we need to have some volume in there. Like, I don't see how you can get around that, but I also feel like there's no flavor in the water. So I don't really want, I don't know. It's only a half an ounce of difference, but in my brain, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a good instinct. One egg white. Let's hope I can do this. I'm going to dry shake that. Get some ice cubes. OK, 
Okay, there we go. Strain whatever in the hell this is into our glass. There it is, the Pisco Sour, no Pisco. Hold the Pisco. Let's, this is gonna probably just be boring. It's just too sweet. I don't know what to say about it. It's boring. It, it tastes like, um, like lemonade, frothy Sprite, if you're being generous. Now, I will say, I didn't because it was asking for a non-alcoholic drink, and technically there's a little alcohol in our Angostura, but I don't do this kind of a drink without a little doodah of Ango on the top here, and maybe even a little swishy swirl. But um, I bet it'll be a lot better. Yep, now it's a lemonade with a little bit of character. But it's not good. It's very hard to make good non-alcoholic cocktails that are like one-to-one -one replacements for alcoholic cocktails. You can easily make great drinks that don't have alcohol in them, but to make a non-alcoholic Pisco Sour that tastes anything even remotely like a Pisco Sour, it's a, that's a real uphill battle. That's not gonna be easy. And frankly, this one is a failure. It failed. Uh, back to the skull for another customer's always wrong. Uh, Woodford Reserve and milk. Old fashioned. You better like uh, a little bit of this milk punch. All right. Old fashioned is kind of a funny drink because you usually start with the ice. And there it goes. Two ounces of Woodford Reserve. Apparently that's very specific. It's very important for this drink, the Woodford Reserve Milk Old Fashioned. There she goes. A couple bar spoons of simple syrup. A couple dashes of Angostura. Give that a big stir. I guess I'm gonna try to do a float of milk on this Old Fashioned. Oh no, it's just gonna cascade in. Sure, there you go. The Milk Old Fashioned. Let's get a garnish in there, Pull that. And there you go. One delicious Woodford Reserve Milk Old Fashioned. Whoa! <laughs> oh, wow. That milk really brings out the bubblegum notes. That was extremely bubblegummy. And bananas? Wow. I did not expect that. I really, honestly, my last thought before taking that sip was, this isn't gonna affect this very much because it's just kind of thinning it out. It's it's not a huge flavor component milk, you know? It's not gonna do much. No, it made a big difference. It added somehow bananas and bubble gum. And I don't like it at all. And like cereal notes, it really brings out the cereal notes from the bourbon. It's got a lot of, breakfast cereal action. I guess with the milk, that makes a lot of sense. Bourbon is corn. Corn puffs, corn pops, plus milk. Maybe that's just breakfast. Little orange action, orange juice, right? What if we put coffee in it? Maybe we're on to something here. Maybe this is how you make the breakfast of champions, you know? It's a bourbon old fashioned with milk and an orange twist and some coffee. Oh, that curdled it. And uh, maybe that'll be the, the, we'll call it the breakfast of champions, right? That's the breakfast of something. It doesn't help it. it. Also doesn't hurt it. It was bad before, it's still bad now. So what's the difference? <laughs> it's not fun. Yeah, it was. it's a terrible drink. <laughs> Thank you, customer. You were wrong. No redemption. All bad, terrible. Terrible! Back to the skull. Once more into the breach, my friends. <laughs> this is a Tito's Old Fashioned. Sure, I'll make it Tito's Old Fashioned. Whatever. What a stupid drink. Badoosh. Tito. Boop, 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 boop. That's right. We're free pouring now. That's a lot of simple. <laughs> this is why I don't free pour. <laughs> Look at that, crystal clear Tito's and sugar. A couple dashes of Angostura. We're gonna stir it up. And pull this twisty. There we go, one Tito's old fashioned. I wanna preface this explaining why it's stupid. The purpose of an old fashioned 
is to elevate the defining characteristics of the spirit in your glass. We're elevating nothing. The defining characteristics of vodka are that it doesn't have any. Cheers. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It's a great vehicle for delivering the unadulterated glory of Angostura bitters because that's all it tastes like. It just tastes like mm, Angostura. Cinnamon, allspice, mace, vanilla, other things that I can't put my finger on, the, the myriad secret ingredients of Angostura bitters. It is a glass of silence. It tastes like standing in an art gallery where you're not allowed to speak. has a little bit of an orange note from the orange twist. I'm trying to understand what is the motivation behind ordering this? What is it? Do they think it's like low cal? Cause like I know vodka and soda is like, oh, the diet drink, but like, it's not by the way. <laughs> it's, it's like the, the differences between this and uh, an old fashioned made with bourbon are minute. Maybe they just don't like bourbon, but they know that with the Ango, it's gonna look a little bit like a real old fashioned. And that's, you know, it just looks cool in their hand. You know, maybe that's what it is. I can't possibly understand it. I don't get it. Back to the skull. Here we go. What do we got? We got ginger ale with a splash of olive juice. What the fuck? <laughs> Fine. Lovely. And now for the finest Canada dry ginger ale. I'm from the part of France that's in New Jersey. If you could tell by my accent. I'm gonna take a sip before it gets ruined because I actually really like a nice ginger ale once in a while. It's a real nostalgic flavor for me. This was the, oh, you're sick, Greg? You're homesick? Here's some ginger ale. That's supposed to make you feel better. And in some ways it does. Olives, yes, the, the famous uh, good bedfellow for ginger ale, right? Nothing goes better together than Olives and ginger ale. Is that enough? You need a little more than that? There we go. Call that two splashes. But it's a big glass. I know that it's like, um, you know, you're not supposed to, but I genuinely enjoy these angry little guys. Nom, 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 nom. They're like tart, they're salty. I love them. I bet they go good with anchovies. One Gino, ginger and olive. Just what I wanted salt water in my ginger ale. You could achieve very much the same effect by adding salt to ginger ale. This was obviously a joke. They were ordering this for somebody at the table and this was to fuck with their friend, or right? Like, I want a ginger ale with the olive juice in it. It was a bachelorette party. I think that the olive juice is sitting on the bottom. Ooh. Mmm. Ooh. It's like a drink that makes you thirstier. Fuck that customer. If there's anything in this episode that's gonna make me puke, it'll be that. <laughs> Not that it was like, oh, it's so bad, I'm retching, but like what that salt is gonna do in my insides in the next hour. <sighs> I believe there's one more on the skull. Oh, here it is. It is the Long Island. <laughs> Long Island iced tea. No sour mix, no Coke, substitute sugar-free Red Bull. <laughs> no sour, no lemon, no Coke, Red Bull, sugar-free. Okay, uh, do these fit in? They do, great. Boom, boom, boom. Three quarters of an ounce of vodka. Vodka. I want three quarters of an ounce of white rum. Three quarters of an ounce of Bacardi. Uh, yeah, we'll use the Cuervo. I'm gonna use this Cuervo. It's not silver, but it's what I got. It doesn't matter. Three quarters of an ounce of that stuff. I need three quarters of an ounce of gin. Three quarters of an ounce of triple sec. In this particular drink, you want the very worst. Hiram and Walker, <laughs> triple sec, then money can buy. And that's it. Because normally now you would use sour mix and Coke. We don't have sour mix. We cut that out. Sour mix would be lemon and simple. If this says no sour, I'm assuming it means no simple, no lemon, okay? None of that. No Coca-Cola, nah, -uh. no. And I think that's what they're trying to do. I think they were trying to get rid of the sugar. I think that's the, the idea here, which is why it's got sugar-free Red Bull. I'm gonna give this a good stir. 
and now for the sugar-free Red Bull. Some people think that this is a trick that your bar spoon was invented to do, pouring down the side of it. It's not. But it's a happy accident of the fact that way back in the olden days when blacksmiths were making bartending tools, blacksmiths had to twist any piece of square stock they came across. They just had to. They were compelled. <laughs> they didn't know how not to. <laughs> the smell of Red Bull. It brings up so many memories. It brings up the memories of driving across the country with my friends in three days. It brings up memories of drinking vodka Red Bulls at Shampoo and Nocturne in Philadelphia. It brings up um, mostly those two things. It doesn't bring up a whole lot of other things. Red Bull gives you vodka life. Oh my God. That's unholy. Ah, it tastes like Robitussin or Dimetap. I don't know which. I think it's Dimetap. It has that, like, it's a little angry in the throat. Not, because cough syrup's not super duper sweet. It's very sweet, but, like, the flavor is, like, metallic or something. This tastes like cough syrup. Some bad shit right here. No, it, it, you get, like, um, bubble gum. Like it smells like bubble gum. You emit, you have sensation of bubble gum when you get close to it. Oh God! Ugh, it's such an angry flavor. It's so angry, but like frosted tips, angry. We're getting into like fundamental questions about the fragility of democracy when we imagine sharing a government with people who intentionally drink this drink. Like I don't. It's an irreconcilable difference. I don't know how we can make this all work. It's, it's like we're carbon-based life, and this would be like meeting an alien that's based on like sulfur or hydrogen or something, like some other basis, an entirely different uh, uh, chain. Uh, uh, they're not on the carbon chain. They're, they're something else, you know? It would be like telling you like, oh me, I eat plastic. That's what I live on. I have plastic for dinner, plastic for breakfast, plastic for lunch, it's delicious. I love me some good plastic. Because this is very exquisitely bad. About the worst thing. I don't like this cocktail. As you can plainly see, the skull is empty, which means that we're all done now. And I've had some bad drinks and some that were kind of fine but that weren't great i mean just terrible ideas here i guess eight drinks there was eight drinks in this episode wow didn't even realize that if you've had a great time watching this episode and you want to share some bad receipts with me the best way to do that would be to be in my discord which is available if you're a member of my patreon you'll find a link to that down here up here in the corner thank you guys so much for watching i'll be back very soon with another episode of the show and until then, here are more of it. Look at them. Look at all these things. The click at them. Clickety, 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 clack. Train goes down the track. See you guys next time. Bye. Good night.